So the question was about problem number 13. I believe it says something along the lines of there is a flagpole that is sitting on top of a building. Okay? So there is a certain length flagpole that's sitting on top of a building. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's 30 feet. Yours obviously is different. All right, but remember I just said I'm going to use, just use different numbers, okay? We do not know the height of the building, but I think that's what we're trying to figure out, correct? Yeah. We're trying to figure out the height of the building, okay? Other information that's given to you is that you're standing a certain distance away from this building, let's say we're standing right here, we're not taking our height into account, all right, it did not address that issue at all in the problem, so we're just going to say uh, the angle of elevation from wherever it is that we're standing, so we're just going to assume ground, but it'll give us an angle of elevation if we were to look up at the bottom of the flagpole, okay, let's say this is, oh, I don't know, 38 degrees here. And then also it's going to give us the angle of elevation up to the top of the flagpole. And clearly that's going to have to be a larger value. I'm going to go ahead and just say that that is 47 degrees. Okay? Again, this is problem number 13, just a variation of it with different numbers. Make sure you're looking at your numbers specifically. All right, to make sure that your picture uses your numbers and not the numbers I'm using up here. Is that clear for everybody? Okay. Are there any questions on my setup? I don't quite understand why you put this here. I don't quite understand why you put that there. Does anybody have any questions on that? Wait, so 38 is the one for the building and then 47 is the whole thing. Yep, 38 is the angle of elevation you would need to look at to see the bottom of the flagpole, or in other words, the top of the building. And then if you angle your eyes a little bit higher, now your eyes are looking to the top of the flagpole. So clearly that angle has to be more than the other one because the angle of elevation to look up at that would have to be higher, right? Okay. All right, everybody's okay with this? Anything else question-wise on the picture? Okay, our job is to solve for X, okay? Um, do I have any right triangles? Yeah. Yes. <coughs> right angles right here. I see two right triangles. I see a smaller one that I will go ahead and outline in green. <coughs> so here is a smaller right triangle. And then I see a larger one. as well. So I see two right triangles, okay? Um, do I know how far away from the building I am standing? No. no. No, so I don't know this, and I definitely don't know the distance I am from the flagpole either. So those are all things that we don't know. If you want to put variables on them, you certainly can. We're going to have to do a variable somewhere, okay? Right now, are there any things that we can do? Can we do Pythagorean's theorem? Can we set up trig functions? Is there anything we can do right now with my picture? No. Not really, because the only sides of the right triangles that we know, like in the small triangle, we know this angle. We know all the angles, actually. We know this angle, but we don't know the opposite side, and we don't know the hypotenuse or the adjacent. We don't know any of the sides. All we know are the angles. Okay. So unfortunately, we're going to have to put another variable somewhere and write an equation that has multiple variables in it. Okay. There are a few ways to tackle this problem. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use my adjacent leg as my other variable. Okay. If you would like to use the hypotenuse, you certainly could. All right. But I think it's going to be a little bit easier just to use the adjacent. Okay. 
Now, using the small triangle, can I write an equation that's going to have both x and z in it? Yeah. What trig function? Tangent, so I could write tangent of how many degrees? 38. Tangent of 38 degrees for me. Remember, your angles are different. Tangent of 38 would equal what over what? X over z. Okay, tangent of 38 equals x over z. Now, when I got two variables, I'm not able to solve that and get a numerical answer for either x or z. I can get x by itself, but it's not going to be a number. It's still going to have a variable in it. I, you know, I can multiply both sides by z to get x by itself, but I still won't have a numerical answer for x. It'll be x equals z times tangent 38. You can't do anything with that until you know what z is. Okay? So unfortunately, there's not much I can do with this. If you have one equation that has two variables, let's try to write another equation that will also have those same two variables in it because then we can solve by substitution. Is there another equation that we could write that has both x's and z's in it? Gwen? The tangent of 47. The tangent of 47 would equal, for me, what? 30 plus x for me, all over z, right? Because the length of the opposite side is 30 plus x, the length of the adjacent side is z. Alright? So now I have one equation with two variables, another equation with two variables. When you have two equations with two variables in it, what you should do is you should take one of the equations, get a variable by itself, and then substitute it into the other equation, so then you can get down to just a single variable. Okay? If it were me, I would solve for this x right here. I would get this x by itself by multiplying both sides by z. So now I'd have z times the tangent of 38 equals x. If I multiply both sides by z. And now I'm going to take z times the tangent of 38 and substitute it in for this x right over here. So that will give me the tangent of 47 equals 30 plus z tangent 38 all over z. Where did the x go? Huh? X was equal to this. So that means this can replace x, since they're equal values. That's the substitution part. Why would I want to do that? Well, now look at my equation. It only has z's in it. Right? Hmm? Nothing. How did I go from here to here? What did I do? I just what? I just substituted in what x was equal to. Oh, I see. Right? I see. And I got that from this other equation. I knew that x was equal to z tangent 38, so I can take z tangent 38 and substitute it in for that x, because that's what x is equal to. And now I only have z's in my equation, so this is good. Okay? This isn't bad now. We don't like fractions, so let's do what to both sides? Multiply. Multiply by z. So that will give me z tangent. 47 equals, the z's gone on the bottom then, right? 30 plus z tangent 38. Let's multiply both sides by z's. That would give me, get rid of the z on that side. Now I'm trying to solve for z, so I want to get all the z's to the same side of the equal sign. So I'm going to subtract z tangent 38 from both sides. And that gives me simply z tangent 47 minus z tangent 38 equals 30. There's two things you could do right now. If you like using decimals, you could see what the tangent of 47 is as a decimal. Okay, it's going to be like 1 point something. So you'd have 1 point something z minus something else z, and you can actually subtract those things, combine like terms. 
Okay? I don't usually do that, but you're welcome to. Just because I don't want to write out all those decimal points. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a z. That way I only have one z in my equation. It's like doing the reverse distributive property. Pulling out the greatest common factor, in other words. I took out my greatest common factor. Both terms had a z in it, so I took it out to the front. So now I have z times this quantity equals 30. So now if I just divide both sides by that quantity, that'll get z by itself. I'll divide by the tangent of 47 minus the tangent of 38. Divide by the tangent of 47 minus the tangent of 38. That cancels. And you just have z equals whatever this number is here. Okay? Uh, be careful on your calculator when you do 30 divided by that. Okay? If you're using a good graphing calculator, you're going to need to make sure you use parentheses appropriately. So I do 30 divided by parentheses, tangent, it opens up parentheses for you, make sure you close it. Then you'll have double parentheses at the end. Make sure this is how you would enter it for those of you with calculators that have parentheses. How come you were able to subtract the tangent 38? If I subtract something from one side of the equal sign, can't I subtract it from the other? Yeah, I know. I just, like, why did you do both of them? You were able to do both of them. I'm not, I'm not following your question. Like, since it's not one, it's not like 3x, it's a z, like, they're both, this, multiple, that, they're separate. Yeah, I know. You said it's not so, I mean, so really what I have right here is I essentially have, with different numbers, I have 10z equals 30 plus, I don't know, 6z. I'm just making those numbers up. Okay, so what would you do right here if you were solving this? Subtract 6z from both sides, right? Which is really exactly the same thing that I did here, except it's not 6z, it's tangent 38z. Okay. I just didn't know it's uh, having the tangent or whatever. No, the tangent of 38 is a number. It's just a decimal that goes on forever, and I don't want to write all those decimal places out. If you want to change everything to decimals and use eight or nine decimals as you write out your equation, you go for it. I just don't like it. Okay? So I'm just going to leave it as tangent 38 times z instead of point. Nine two five two two, you know, whatever. Z. Okay. Once you get what z is equal to, remember, that wasn't what was asked of us. We didn't want to know how far away from the building we were. We wanted to know the height of the building. We wanted to know the x value. So once you know what z is equal to, you just take that number, substitute it right here in place of the z. Take it times the tangent of 38, and that will equal your x value, which is the height of your bill. Questions in general on the process? Okay.